So now I'll uh, start to discuss the big three heavy guns of manipulation. And uh, the last part of this part one, part A of the problem, part two, okay, is religion. And uh, the, the second half of part two, the problem, will pick up with um, the, the subversive use of symbolism, and then we'll go into uh, the, the last and potentially the biggest method of manipulation, chaos sorcery. But we'll look into religion now. And it is one of the big three methods of manipulation, and it is essentially all religions are essentially one thing in disguise. They're presented to us as different, essentially different ideologies, and uh, they all do have a core of truth uh, to them that is very well hidden, it's very well concealed, it's there. You have to go through a lot to get to it. But religion in and of itself is, is technically a disguise for something. And I look at it as a binding, as a magical binding, which we'll see. Thomas Paine, who is one of my personal greatest philosophical influences, one of the uh, people who is uh, really one of the uh, core philosophers of the American Revolution and the principles that founded this country uh, about freedom and about sovereignty. He made this statement regarding religion, which I personally resonate with and have for many, many years. I do not believe in the creed professed by the Jewish church, by the Roman church, by the Greek church, by the Turkish church, by the Protestant church, nor by any church that I know of. My own mind is my own church. All national institution of churches, whether Jewish, Christian, or Turkish, appear to me no other than human inventions set up to terrify and enslave mankind and monopolize power and profit. That is what organized religion is really about. It is a methodology of control, specifically mind control, through fear. Through fear of the unknown, through fear of the, uh, the, 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 the unexplained aspects of ourselves, of how we are actually connected to divinity. And we need no priest to experience that. We must become our own priests, our own uh, shamans, if you will, to experience the divine within us. And uh, Thomas Paine's quote there perfectly um, uh, uh, encapsulates how I feel about religion in general. It's, and moreover, it's because I understand the word religion and what it really means. The word religion is from the Latin religare, and religare means to tie back, to hold back, or to bind fast. It does not mean to reconnect, as many individuals will translate the word religion. If you look up the word religare, which is where the word religion is derived, it means to tie by binding. That is what the word actually means. If you know how to connotatively translate Latin and you know the true etymology of words, religion means binding or to hold back by tying. And what is it binding? What is binding? Yeah. Here, to, to prove the point in a Latin dictionary, I look up the verb religare and it says, to tie out of the way, to bind fast, or to moor. I'll be presenting a couple of these, you know, um, uh, dictionary lookups just to prove w w the actual etymology of the word so someone doesn't have to take my word for it. So, religion is binding, but what is binding? What is binding in actual magical practice, in occult circles, in occult parlance? What does binding mean? Well, binding is a magical term. And it is descriptive of a class of spells intended to thwart or hold back the progress of an opposing force or practitioner. So that's what binding is, to thwart or hold back, to tie out of the way. That's what religion is, a binding. So what is it trying to bind? If it's binding something, what is it binding? Well, I call this the dark board of truth. Okay? This is... The, the religious traditions of the world all around the outside 
Inside, in, in the inner circle, you have the mystical traditions, but then there's the core of truth. That's what all religions ultimately share. But it's also what the exoteric aspect of the religion is trying to hold you back from. That's what it's binding. Religion is saying, this shell out here is what the truth is. It's saying, don't look here, and certainly don't look here. Take our word that this is what it is here. So religious traditions are exoteric, meaning on the outside, of the, on the periphery. The esoteric, or the mystical traditions, come much deeper and closer to the core of truth. They're, they may not be at the bullseye, at the very core, or the heart of the truth itself, but they're much closer. They guard the inner sanctum, the holy of holies, the true secrets, the, the, the thing that really connects people to truth, that, it, that is, is indwelling. So that's what we want to get to. We want to get to that bullseye. Religions are here to act as a shell to prevent us from getting to that core. And that's what they're binding. Isn't to say that there isn't truth to be found within any of them. But to look, again, it's, it's, a, it's a box for consciousness. You're looking into any given religion, you're not seeing the whole picture. And the thing that most people do not see when they look into a religion or when they become part of a religion is that all religions share one common thread. They are all essentially astrotheology in disguise. What astrotheology is, it is the placing as gods the, the planetary bodies and the, the astronomical bodies that we see in the sky. So it is essentially the worship of the gods in the sky, the planets, the stars, the sun, and the moon. So there are three major groups of astrotheological worship. There is a, um, a, a, a aspect of astrotheology that is dedicated to the smaller lights in the heavens. The, the pinpoints of light, so to speak. They're the, the sun, I'm sorry, the stars and the planets. Okay, so the, the, the small lights of the heavens are the stars and planets, all the little pinpoints of light that we see in the night sky. That's one of the uh, 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 bodies of worship for astrotheology. Uh, and the other two are the large lights that we see in the heavens, the sun and the moon. So you have three major groupings, or let's say sects, of astrotheology. You have the worshippers of the sun, the worshippers of the moon, and then the worshippers of the small lights, the stars and planets. Now, I'm going to choose one of them to tell the story of how that particular religion is given to one of these aspects of astronomical bodies, and since it is the religion that I was indoctrinated into when I, when I was young, I'm going to choose Christianity, and I'm going to tell the story of how essentially Christianity is an ancient sun worship religion.